Hello, Imperial Citizen, and welcome to another analysis from the Archives. The Death Corps of Krieg uniform is very iconic. As we surely all know, the design is definitely inspired by World War I. But while very stylish, it is a combination of different uniforms and gear from several nations, and in this video I will explain what the uniform is based on. Fighting during World War I was not limited to the Western Front between France and Germany. In fact, you could basically draw a straight line from Dunkirk to Baghdad and approximately find battlefields along the entire line. And it was fighting in many other different places as well, joined by nationalities from all over the world. But fortunately for our purposes, the Death Corps uniform seems to be mostly inspired by the main forces on the Western Front. Now, during several points in the war, uniforms have changed quite a bit. The Death Corps of Krieg also has a variety of different color schemes available to them, and different types of troops feature somewhat different gear, so it isn't always obvious which armies the inspiration for each item came from. Because of this, we're just going with the most iconic and obvious references, but I will explain some of the nuances along the way. Now let's start with what is perhaps the most iconic piece of equipment, the trench coat. The Death Corps trench coat is double-breasted, meaning it has symmetrical buttons on both sides. And because it also very iconically features the front folding backwards, the trench coat is most definitely inspired by the French. This folding back was an option to increase mobility and the coat could also be worn hanging down. The French trench coat, with the exception of colonial troops, has been blue throughout the war. But Krieg's 143rd Siege Regiment also features blue uniforms, so that is not a problem. The French had very simple cuffs on the sleeves like the one we see here. During the same time period, the Belgians shared the almost exact same design. One major difference, however, seems to be the colour. The red contrast is something that is absolutely inspired by the Germans, as having the uniforms lined with contrasting cloth is something only their uniforms have consistently featured. There is, however, not a single army that has such a high collar like the Death Corps. The French collar was very flat and almost tucked in with rounded corners. From all designs, the Death Corps collar seems to have the most in common with Germany, but it is definitely not a one-to-one -one copy. On to the next item, and this is my favourite of the whole design, is the gas mask. Now it's good to actually consider this item as two pieces rather than one, because that's also how it has been designed. The face mask is strapped and sealed to the head. Then you can attach a variety of respirator designs. For the death core, this part is very obviously inspired by the British box respirator. In real life, the bag was actually designed to hold both the respirator and the mask at the same time when the soldiers aren't wearing it. But since the Death Corps never take their mask off, the design of the bag seems to be a bit modified. It is also made from leather, which the British version has never been. That seems to suggest more of a German influence, as a lot of their gear was made from the same brown leather. As far as I can tell, the mask itself is mostly German, but instead of the cylindrical canister filter, this one leads into the tube. During the war, the material of German gas masks switched between rubber, leather and cloth, depending on what was available. It's clearly not the French one, although something very little people know is that late into the war, the French also started using canisters, and ended up with a design looking very similar to the German one. The helmet mostly resembles a German-style helmet. It has a rim above the eyes and also has the ears covered. The Stahlhelm was introduced in 1916, although at that time it has some slight differences compared with the version used by Germany in World War II. One thing that is missing from the Death Corps helmet would be the small ventilation tubes on both sides. Now that's where the design gets mixed with the French Adrian helmet. It has a decorative crest over the top that also serves as a ventilation cover. The Adrian helmet was also adopted by some other armies, including the Italians and the Russians. However, it could also have been inspired by a German firefighter helmet. One particular item that is often overlooked but very particular to World War I are the putties. These are cloth straps wrapped around the ankles to stop dirt from entering the shoes and also to support the legs. 
Almost all armies had soldiers wearing putties during the war, but the ones from the Death Corps are probably inspired by the British, as they were the only army wearing them most consistently throughout the war and also in khaki colours. The French went into the war wearing black boots and switched to putties later, but these were mostly blue to complement their uniforms. The Germans officially issued leather boots, but as leather became less available during the war, many soldiers had to resort to wearing putties as well. The backpack of the Death Court of Krieg is very similar to the one used by the Germans. It is made of leather and iconically has the roll of cloth strapped around the top. Originally, this would have been a rolled up German trench coat. But as the Death Corps soldier is already wearing his coat, we could also assume it is a tarp or any other piece of fabric equipment. This metal container at the bottom is supposedly used for carrying cooking equipment and food, but no single army during World War I had this specific design. The overall design of the straps and ammo pouches is very likely of German origin. The French had a similar design with leather, but like the Death Corps, the Germans had square ammo pouches, while the French were equipped with bigger, rounded ones. The British had the most modern strap designs, but these were made exclusively of cloth. The bayonet and the shape of its blade are almost entirely German. The blade of the German bayonet had a bit of a leaf tapered shape to it, while the British one was perfectly straight. The handle, however, is definitely German, as you can see from the downward slope of the guard. Bayonet designs changed a lot during the war, as long bayonets and hooks were considered impractical once the soldiers were confined to the small space in trenches. Now we get to the death course shoulder pads. Very useful for showing regimental numbers, but no country during World War I has equipped their soldiers with anything like these. There has been experimentation with body armour, the most famous of which is the lobster plate armour. Something similar is worn by the Krieg engineers, but no type of body armour has seen consistent use during World War I. Last, but definitely not least, we get to our favourite part of the Death Corps equipment, and that is the infamous shovel. Now as it turns out, shovel designs for most armies were rather similar, so this could have been inspired by both the Germans and the French. The British were the only army to have a modular design. Due to the brown leather strapping, I'm inclined to say it's mostly a German design. However, one thing that majorly stands out is that the Death Corps shovel has a crossed handle, while entrenchment kits during World War I almost all used smooth ends. Auf Wiedersehen.